Welcome to the Car Guy channel. We got a show today that's very, very unusual. We're not going to leave the shop except for one little road test in a 1966 Ford Mustang. Gorgeous car, GT car, great history behind it, and a lot of fun. We're going to take you through a couple of our what we call our rainy day projects and things we're going to get ready for the winter. Customer brought his car in for service. Got to show you that car. It's absolutely spectacular, and it's a 1941. Hey, I better not spoil a surprise for you. Hey, two things you don't touch. Don't touch any of these cars. Don't touch that dial. Sit down, get yourself a cold one, and enjoy the show. When you build a street rod or a custom car, all these exotic things, there's a lot of R&D, research and development. They don't make a lot of parts for these cars that are available, like some of the easier cars, some of the Mustangs and some of the Chevelles, a lot of turnkey stuff. There's not a lot of turnkey stuff for Ranchero. Doing a four-link rear suspension back here was a really, really challenge. We had to go ahead and order one that was for a Falcon and rechange some things around to make it work right. And a lot of things we did on it, I think, really turned out nice to put in the sway bar system, the coilovers, the disc brakes in the back. Back. Then we got ahead and got a hold of Curry. We wanted to go ahead and get the big rear end. Dennis did a great job on trying to design and custom build the car the way he wants it. And sometimes there's always some cost features involved there, guys and gals, but he's getting what he wants, and I admire him tremendously for this, and it's kind of nice to build the car for a guy like Dennis that knows what he wants. And that's really half the battle. If you know what you want and you got the juice to fund it, I say rock and roll with it. But we got the Curry rear end in the, already installed, all the stuff welded in and painted all the pieces the way Dennis wanted them painted. And that's always a controversy of colors. When you go ahead and build something like this, you got to detail it. Now, here's where the trick comes in. You have to assemble the car. Any car you guys build at home, you got to assemble it and then take it back apart. And that's what the whole, whole world's all about. You can see the lines are done really nice. Nice stainless steel lines put all inside here. The way they're bracketed, held to the car. You want to make it secure. And I always get kind of annoyed when I see some cars and things are hanging and dangling. And, and the other thing, people use rubber hose everywhere, you know, for a fuel line. The fuel line's got to be steel from the tank all the way to the carburetor or the fuel injection. But when they're put together like this, I think it's a nice clean job. And do the Z right here, run it along the outside of the frame. Move it all the way down to the car. Here's a union here because the line was only so long. And rubber grommets. We use rubber grommets everywhere we possibly can here to shoot these into the car. And that's how it's done. I think it looks really, really nice. Then we're going to go to the front area for the brake line. And when you go ahead and do these type of bends and put it together like this here, it just makes the job so quality. And I know Dennis will really appreciate it. A lot of extra work went into it, but he does want things right, and so do I. This right here happened to be an automobile. It's a, called a Hollywood Graham. Extremely rare, extremely unusual. Hollywood and Hup kind of went together with Graham. Do a little history on them. They're utterly fantastic. Get a phone call from a gentleman that actually passed away down in Oregon. He started the process on this car, and he started the build. He did a design. He had his own thoughts, his own patterns. And so we have our tech. Jared's going through this car from bumper to bumper to find out what is it going to take to get this car here on the road and get the car running. Now, purchasing a car like this, is nothing wrong with it. If you guys are skilled and you have some knowledge behind behind you and a little bit of money to buy this. But then there's a lot of mysteries and the mysteries are we never heard it run, we never drove it, and we have no idea what works and what does not work. Well I'm not bragging babes so don't put me down. Today Mustang I considered as a blue chip stock. It's one of the best investments in automobiles you can make, the most successful car ever built, and they're a good car to have. They never go down in value. But the neat thing is when you do try to find a Mustang, you want to get one with some options. Options is what really makes a lot of this stuff here work on all cars in the classic car world all over. And they did make a Mustang with four lugs, six cylinder, three speed stick. They still have a good value out there, but nothing beats a GT. Looking for, 140 in the top of 